Welcome back and many thanks, Flo. Staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country. There is a morning at NTV. My name is Roman Busiku. We do this every Monday to Farahi Day. We lose sleep. We take pride in the fact that we lose sleep on a daily weekday basis to ensure that we advance to you this information that you need to actually conquer your day, conquer your week, vis-a-vis -vis conquer your careers. I have Emmanuel Bobuide. He is the chairperson of the Uganda National Commission for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. That is in short, UNESCO. He's also the executive director for Faraja Africa Foundation is going to be telling us uh, some of the issues that are actually uh, worked on as a result of this organization. What do they actually espouse as far as values are concerned? How did the social <laughs> ban affect their businesses? I'm talking about Facebook. How did it affect their businesses and how have they continued to grapple under the COVID-19 pandemic? Social entrepreneurship, that's the conversation. And mm. why digital access matters in this sphere for youth entrepreneurs. Very good morning, Wawire Emanuel. Good morning. You are inspired by the success stories of other people, according yes. to the articles I've been reading about you. Mm. You've been doing a lot. You did win awards, mm. so many of them in mm. this sphere of social entrepreneurship. But uh, mm. first off, what is a social business? What is social entrepreneurship? Who like to know? Social entrepreneurship is more like uh, a business that is not only profit oriented, but mm. rather invests its profit in solving community problems. Oh, but also, it might not necessarily be investing into solving problems in the community uh, through their profit, but rather through their service. So that's basically it. Mm. The problems cut across every different sectors, mm. health, um, s access to clean water, uh, also social justice causes and so on. Teenage pregnancies in Kabale, you have people like what we're going there disseminating information on how to curtail the same. Exactly. Drug abuse in a particular jurisdiction of exactly. Moyo, you exactly. send your uh, foot soldiers to that area, disseminate information on how best to curtail that vice. Exactly. All so right. the, the money you have is invested in maybe getting an expert or a mm. consultant I or see. someone or a team of people to be able to facilitate the process. And of in case of mobility that. issues like COVID-19 and the measures put in, uh, in place to in, you know curtail the spread of COVID-19, you are in campus need to reach out to someone in Gulu, mm -hmm. you're going to need the, uh, the, some social media platforms like Facebook, mm -hmm. which are largely right now under lock and key. Yes. So that's why we're here to talk about how you've been affected by such a ban and mm. so forth. But first of all, let's talk about the foundation that you are heading, Faraja Africa Foundation. Faraja, what do you do there? Uh, Faraja is a Swahili word, mm. which means comfort. So one of the key things we looked at is there are a lot of uh, unemployment issues, mm. challenges, social justice issues that mm. are keeping us unsettled, keeping us unhappy and so on. So the question was, who is going to comfort Africa? So that's one of the reasons why Faraja Africa came in place, mm. to comfort Africa, but most importantly, bring solutions, be the solution, instead of crying, instead of running around here and there, but coming with tangible solutions in the smallest way possible mm. and in the biggest way possible that mm. we can. So we do focus mostly on building leaders uh, to be able to actually effectively serve their communities. On top of that, building social entrepreneurs who are able to um, not only make money or empower themselves, mm. but also empower their communities as well, uh, where we believe in the principle of each one teach one. Mm. And then we also look at uh, good governance and advocacy, whereby we engage diplomatically mm -hmm. with governments. In East Africa, we currently work with the parliaments, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And also we have a partnership with the East African Legislative mm -hmm. Assembly. <coughs> You've heard of the National Youth Parliaments mm -hmm. and the East African Youth Parliaments. Indeed. Those are convened by Faraja Africa Foundation mm -hmm. and with other partners. But on top of that, we also look at not only strengthening the institutions of parliament, but also the youth, youth leadership mm -hmm. uh, councils, guilds, NYCs, and so on. Mm -hmm. And working with them, we are able to do the small we can do, but in a collective manner, we are, suppo we are supposed to look out for a greater impact. Mm -hmm. But we believe everything done in isolation is like a drop in an ocean, but if we all partner, we mm -hmm. can be able to do something much more big and better. And of course, as a social justice advocate over the years, as, as a human rights activist, a pan-Africanist, you know, I would use and maximize on the power of the internet yes. uh, to advance uh, social justice uh, mm. to my citizens here and mm. very far around mm. the globe. So mm. the internet really, really came in handy. Mm -hmm. But then right now, we are dealing with a social media burn, meaning many of these individuals might not be readily, um, you know, able to get on these social media sites mm -hmm. and advance their social mm -hmm. um, 
justice goes in that regard. You, as Emmanuel Wawiri and your counterparts, how have you been affected by this socio uh, media ban? Uh, before uh, before then, when we had just begun our activism uh, 2011. 2011. 2011, uh, because Facebook had just come in 2010, we're still getting used mm -hmm. to it. In 2011, uh, we're now very much acquainted. Uh, uh, I stand corrected, I joined in 2010. Indeed. We were able to mobilize each other in the region. Uh, we organized international youth camps through mm -hmm. Facebook mm -hmm. and then would meet together. We had groups at that time, groups were a big thing. And then later on, um, as we continued in 2013, 14, we were able to start organizations mm -hmm. by just Facebook. No websites, no nothing, just Facebook. That is Faraja coming in 2013. Yes, mm -hmm. and we were working together as a team of young people uh, across the region. Yes. We get like in Kenya, in, in Southern Africa, in Malawi, in Lesotho, and so mm. on. All of us would come with different ideas, different mm. solutions, and we have discussions. I see. At that time, Skype was something, though not very, um, data was an issue. Indeed. But we'd work together and be able to achieve what would achieve. Business was thriving in terms of safaris. Uh, conferences were easy to organize and engage with other people. Uh, on top of that, partners easily came on board because we were able to mobilize each mm. other in that manner or in that sense. However, today, um, du during the lockdown, for example, starting before elections, mm. you will find that very many innovative ideas came up because we, our freedom of movement was curtailed or limited by the COVID pandemic. Mm and also in social interaction, because those are some of the basic principles for business. So we had to resort so much to doing business online, and mm -hmm. that needed a lot of innovation, a lot of ideas. If you look at what uh, most of the social enterprises that have come out, mm -hmm. no matter how small, mm -hmm. they've been during this COVID period, especially for young people. Indeed. Yeah, but the curtailing of these platforms, for example, Facebook mm -hmm. particularly, mm -hmm. it closes the digital market for especially people who are doing small businesses, uh, who, are, who don't have the infrastructure most of companies have, mm -hmm. uh, like maybe uh, they have company profiles, they have a history of work, and Man so on, and, and manpower, and they also have the connections, exactly. Oh, I see. Now, for those who are entirely relying on Facebook to do their marketing, mm -hmm. their bidding, to reach out to people, mm -hmm. they have a challenge. Why? Because they cannot be able to do target marketing. Because if VPN is on, you're in Russia. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know where. Uh, if you target Uganda, it will be difficult Indeed. to get me, you get, mm. in your social media marketing. Mm. Unless you are sure that I already like your page. But then, how many pages do you actually like? Indeed. You know, whereby you follow them vividly. Unless it's uh, maybe NTV that you're interested in and it's where you love being, Jumia or something else, who have already, already invested in the other infrastructure I keep talking about. So, and on top of that, it was also limited uh, a lot of um, advocacy endeavors or engagements. Morning people are not used to YouTube. Uh, a lot of live streaming for events is happening in the localities, in the villages. Someone puts mm. their phone and they do a Facebook Live of maybe like these discussions mm. in a laptop and I they see. cannot be able to come to NTV in Kampala. Mm. But now that can't happen because most people don't know how to go around YouTube. YouTube mm. has a lot of its own rules. Facebook was providing this platform for free mm. and so on. That limitation is also there as well. For many other young people who are on Twitter, Kampala is the predominantly Twitter-fested mm. area. But if you go out, there are one out of ten, two out of ten who are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So that reduces the audience or the flow of information like it was meant to be. Are those the only challenges that have befallen social justice entrepreneurs? Because for myself, mm. bec before this pandemic, mm. the challenges we would do, we would actually grapple with on a daily basis were mm. government officials, the mm. government itself, uh, saying, no, Romeo, don't go there, don't mm. go there, don't talk mm. about ADCO 102B mm. of the Constitution. Remember Toji Kwataco? Mm. We got Edwin. into so many run-ins with the law. Mm. Jail times here and there beyond mm. 48 hours, those mm. are the issues we grappled mm. with. Sanctions on mm. you as a social justice champion. Mm. Please do not employ Romeo Busiku because mm. he says this and that. Mm. So to put you in a position whereby you are actually silencing yourself. Mm. So right now, what are some of those factors that are causing some of, some of these social justice champions to actually silence themselves and not actually go ahead with their socio business? S social media was offering a voice. Mm. 
amplifying uh, many people's voices, mm. especially those who have not yet been able to be recognized in communities mm. as influencers. It had, it was giving a leveled uh, platform for these particular voices to be happening. Uh, but currently, as we speak, that voice has been suppressed. Mm. That that voice has been uh, put down. Mm. However, one of the key things that we look at uh, is that there. Th one of the things that the government should be looking at is not necessarily to uh, suppress. Mm. You can regulate, but not suppress. And also, it's the responsibility of us as uh, citizens to uh, combat, because the government is talking about issues mm. to deal with fake news. Mm. It's a big challenge, not only to the government, but also to the sectors we are in. Mm. It's a responsibility for us as citizens to also verify the content that we are looking at, mm. uh, what we share, what we circulate, and mm. so on. And also adapting to a reading culture. Before you share a link, please mm. read it, internalize it, and mm. fact check it, mm. and see. Uh, social media itself has tried to uh, boost or increase the verification process mm. of different particular pl platforms yeah. to start bringing uh, mm. opportunities for credible news, credible information mm. to be shared in their platforms and instead of violation. However, if government continues to suppress, mm. then it will hinder a lot of participatory of part participatory processes of the citizens mm. in key governance mm. processes, in decision making. And, and so of on. course, Ms. Wabwira, you and I know very well, unequivocally clearly, yeah. by August of this very year, 54 yeah. NGOs were shut down yes. by the government. Yes. Now, these uh, individuals, uh, civil society groups that would have gone a long way in helping lend a hand to mm. other social justice uh, champions who were in these fields of governance, mm. uh, sexual reproductive health, education, mm sanitation and clean water so meaning these are some of the other challenges mm. these that strict mm. strict um, dwindling uh, uh, shrinking civic space mm. that is actually being orchestrated by the government don't you think it's also going a long way in dampening the resolve of these social justice entrepreneurs of to achieve their goals of course definitely it's it is a challenge mm. but besides the internet mm. it's it's a very big challenge but I think one also one of the challenges that we also have in the in our government is that there's lack of proper strategizing in dealing with issues, but rather more of impulsive uh, response or reactiveness to I things. Mm. Because if some of uh, th these things are set and done early mm. and um, pre-checks are done on time, regulations are reviewed on time and so on, mm. then reactions would not be the ideal way of going around now about things. Because right now, um, there's what we call targeted um, persecution, mm. whereby because they feel uh, the director is leaning here or the, 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 m the programs are targeting to do ABC. Uh, let's not cut to the chase, Emmanuel. As yeah. socio-entrepreneurs, mm. terrorists, mm. as mm. government contents. No. <laughs> when you talk about bad health, are you a terrorist? When you no. talk about bad education, are you a terrorist? When you talk about bad access or poor access to sexual reproductive health and rights, are you a terrorist? And why does this come out one too many times? It would only be deemed so if a social entrepreneur is using their resources and their money to fund uh, more like programs which are endangering the security of people and so on. Mm. But most of, if you understand social justice Thank very you. well, mm. social justice focuses on uh, elevating the challenges the community is facing. Amazing. And that's the most important thing. So if an organization comes out to support and do that, mm. if you feel that they are going astray, mm. you could call them in, question them, investigate, mm -hmm. and more probably let them off with a warning, mm. but rather than shutting them down. Mm. Because if an organization is registered, that means it's regulated under URSB, regulated under the NGO Bureau, and so on. But the NGO Bureau is not meant to to clamp down these spaces, but rather to straighten an agenda that leads to the ND um, National Development Plan, for example, SDG goals development, and so on. But if it's done in that, there is malice. I All would right. believe it's malice and so on. All so right. entrepreneurs are not that. All right. Mm. So what we need is to strike a balance and create yes. an atmosphere that is conducive for both the social justice entrepreneurs yes. and the government to operate alike. Yes. Emmanuel Mawire is the executive director for Faraja Africa Foundation. Please, thank you very much for coming through.
Thank you. And indeed to you too who has been watching Morning Rain TV from the onset, 6.30 a.m. up to now. We do appreciate that undeterred love and support. A break is in the offing, but more information is coming your way largely on vaccinations. We'll be right back.